Hello there everyone, this is iMark3 and welcome back to Warhammer 40,000 Mechanicus. Welcome back to the oily embrace of the Omnisire, the machine god of all technology and all that is, hailing from the holy planet of Mars and is of course a different version of the almighty, all-seeing, all wise emperor of mankind because to think otherwise would be to divide humanity yes welcome back and welcome back to our initial deployment which has gone slower than I would have thought but um, hey details <laughs> so during last time we explored what was going on we did our first exploration of this um, particular deployment and we have reached the final chamber the only mission marked a chamber in our quest to secure samples of Xeno technology. Let us do so. Because the final chambers, well, objective chambers rather, are always fights. Ooh, there we go. Another point. Uh, okay, I think this one bears a little bit of expl explanation. Necrons, if you critical hit them, it outright kills them. But normally, when you take them down, they actually aren't dead yet. They are damaged and incapacitated. They need to be hit again to finish them, but if they're left alone for too long, they get back up and start fighting again. They're like zombies in that respect, I suppose. Mechanical zombies. That is actually a fair way to describe them. Um, Undying inhuman mechanical zombies from space. Sure, let's go with that. But anyway, um, this means that they reanimate faster. And honestly, if we let the awareness get too high, they reanimate incredibly quick, and so it gets harder and harder and harder. And harder to actually finish them off in the middle of a fight. And at that point, well, odds are you're going to fail the deployment, quite simply. So, yes, continue. And they see us. Those green eyes that stare into our souls. Also, I remember the game um, I was talking about last time, in Forms of Immortality. Ashes of the Singularity. That was the one. I, I prefer the um, method of ascension in uh, Ashes of Singularity to the one in this. Heretus, Xenos Form Detected. Necron Warrior. Rose confirms. It's confirmed! Um, Ready to cogitate is now function for synthetic forms. And yeah, of course, our resident tech, acquire, tech acquisition expert is very happy with this. Overwhelming excitement. Finally, we can study this standard construct, Necron Warrior. Weak spots detected plus none equals concerning. Yeah, I think you can see the issue with these guys. Um, Tiresis. I'm not really sure who this guy is, Tiresis. Hmm. I wonder what the symbols emblazoned on the torsos. Yeah, he's speculating about something, but um, yeah, um, Captrix. Captrix is pointing out that it's not the point to be thinking about that. Do not underestimate Gorse weaponry, highly volatile. Flipping Gorse flayer technology. Oh dear. This is true. I've heard our brothers and sisters and mechanicals have lost their lives trying to solve the mysteries of these Xenos weapons. Approach with caution. <laughs> yeah, and uh, now Skelover is pointing things out as well. I honestly wonder what um, an Imperium-based flayer weapon would look like. Hmm. Maybe it's time to commit some tech heresy. I don't know. Anyway, it's also, double checking cogitators, widely known that they will plus self-repair, plus reanimate, or plus reconstruct themselves, if left the time to do so. That's what I was mentioning earlier when I said that they revive more quickly. Uh, wounds that would instantly kill a Skatari are the equivalent of a Class C Graze to a Necron. However, well, got to remember though, of course, that um, I did crank the difficulty up to max, so... 50% <laughs> extra hit points. Plus more enemies, plus stuff like that. Okay. Um, now, during recording testing, this is the part which lagged, so I'm going to try and not do too much. I did turn the graphics settings down a bit as well. So, this is a deployment phase. We can use our um, cognition points to deploy extra troops as well. 
So for, for every cognition point, I can deploy a servitor, if I so choose to, um, and deploy them within the within a certain range of my tech priests, or in this case, in my starting zone, since, since this is the first turn of the battle. Um, orange objects contain cognition, which I can use to gather and recharge my reserve. So this is why I mentioned it's not particularly useful to hold on to it while wandering around in, in a deployment. And these red structures are deployment points where extra Necron forces can wander into the fray. And there's a lot of them. Because the difficulty increased the number of Necrons as well. Oh dear. Though that said, these guys on this platform, there's two warriors, and there's a three cognition point item over there. That said, I don't exactly have much more of cognition stuff, so... Could be useful? Maybe? I don't know. There is also, though, that said, um, a seven-point console over here, which I will be going after ASAP, because it is really freaking important to do so. And I'll tell you why in a moment. As I move my two guys there, I'm going to drop in a servitor behind them. So if something pops out over here, there will be something else to shoot at. Um, services are basically um, cannon fodder with the added bonus that they generate extra tactical resource for you when they get hurt I'll deploy two of them for now and uh, save two points for extra use so start the battle here we go um, when I tested and recording inside the battle itself was pretty darn stable it was just during that deployment phase that it seemed to have problems so as you can see we've got blue movement outline and then we've got an orange one beyond that. Normally, orange is counted as a sprint, if you're familiar with XCOM series. In this case, though, orange means to move into that bracket, you have to spend a cognition point. So the more your tech priests and forces comprehend, the faster they run around in their high spirit of excitement at learning all the stuff about this fancy Xenos tech, or something to that effect. Um, so, if you have enough cognition, you can go from one side of the map to the other and back again in the same turn. That said, though, every weapon system can only be activated once. So, yeah, there is that as well. Let's move on, though. So, we've got two warriors currently deployed. They are nasty, nasty buggers. Um, the object I notice over here is a terminal. It's important. Um, it is a scan or destroy kind of thing. If I wander over there, I can study the Xenos in to information within, and I will earn more Blackstone. Sometimes it will spawn extra enemies as well. But there is another function which the game didn't actually tell me when I first went through the tutorial. At least I don't recall it doing so. Oh, getting here requires a spending a point, though. Um... Don't go bother. And that is, if you destroy that, it actually knocks back the awakening level slightly. However, you can scan it and then blow it up to get both bonuses. So that is why they are useful. For now, though, I think I should just do some pot shotting, shouldn't I? Let's um, let's decide what to do here. What I need is the ability to get. Um... Oh, my weapon it doesn't have any real range, does it? Let's get this, um, you know, let, let's spend it. Let's go over here. Walk over there. Study the console. We get extra blackstone. 15, but we are early in. But it's still, still an amount. Nothing else has happened. So, I'm going to get out my battle axe and whack it. Sorry, my, my staff of um, something or other. Uh, power Axe, that's it. It didn't kill it, though. Normally, they, well, on normal difficulty, they only have five hit points, but in this case, they have seven now, because, you know, extra hit points. Critical for two. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm just doing that to weaken it now. And then I'm just going to move over here and end turn, I think. Actually, no. I'm going to send out my Servo Skull. Every um, tech piece has a Servo Skull. You can see it hovering right there next to him. 
but this can affect anything on the map and normally it is um, it connects one point from one of these or it can reveal an enemy's stats but as you level up your tech priests they get more abilities let's go ahead and reveal this guy actually no cognition we don't, we don't we don't we don't need any extra cognition do we not right now let's go ahead and reveal the stats on this guy so we're going to send a, a friendly skull over to scan him and 15 hit points ouch part of me regrets being on max difficulty <laughs> but now i've made my bed i'm gonna lie in it fine okay that's that can't do anything else so enter by the way at the top in case you didn't spot it before be surprised if you didn't it's turn order so we can see who's doing what order. Um, if you haven't moved a unit yet, you can hit wait, or rather delay turn, which actually shuffles that character down to last place in the starting in this round. It's always going to move into last place, so you can't shuffle beyond that. But um, it still it can be of use. Let's see. If I move on to them, I'm diagonally getting a cognition point from this obelisk, and more importantly, I'm in range of that guy. So I can actually start to do some damage. Thank you. And I don't need that cognition point for anything, so... I can just do some zaps, but it's like one to two points of damage each time. So, not very good. <laughs> I had forgotten how weak I am at the start of this game. Let's put it that way. Um, do I want to use my scan? Yeah, let's scan the other warrior. I want to know if he's got anything special on him or not. Yes, he's got resistance to NG weaponry. All in he's got less hit points, but he's got minus one to all incoming NG damage. Which sucks. Yeah, you, you, you stay there for the moment. I'm going to have to be very careful with these guys. Jeez. They're only... They're only... They're, they're, only, they're, they're almost the most basic unit we can come against. And I'm seriously thinking about how to try and take these guys on. <laughs> uh. Yes, this is going to be... Uh, hmm. I don't think I want to do anything with it. Actually, no. Both of the enemies have already moved. Notice, by the way, I can't spend cognition to accelerate the movement of my troop units. Hmm. I'm going to have this guy stay where the heck he is. Yeah. Also notice, by the way, Awakening just went up by one point. Also, that Cognition refreshed, and then it was immediately grabbed because I had a Tech Priest next to it. So, at the start of every round, all Cognition units on the map refresh themselves. And, if there is a Tech Priest next to it, and you've got empty space in your Cognition bar, you grab that Cognition point for yourself. Let's bring in a, an extra servitor here. I don't have anything heavy right now, so that's okay. Um, how far do I have to go to... pretty far actually. Let, let's have my um, melee guy wait. This guy, I can get a bit more plinking done if I just step out of cover. There we go. Ah, okay. Machine spirits have kicked in. Every weapon has a machine spirit bar, which is that red bit underneath. In this case, it's only one. So, all you have to do is attack with a weapon, and it will build up machine spirit. And then, if you attack while the machine spirit is fully charged, it does the machine spirit effect. With these blaster pistols, it's plus one damage. So they do a little bit more damage on impact. So now it's two to three instead of one to two, which is not bad. It's still 50% better. Oh, that was a crit as well, three. Let's fire off the other one. Two damage, not as good, but still. That enemy is down to six, so I am whittling him down pretty quickly. But now I need to step back to make sure I don't get shot in the face myself. That's fine. Here comes the one with energy resistance. Can't target anyone. I'm going to move this... I think I'm going to move the servitor back slightly to there. No, let's have him there, I think. 
That'll be good. The problem with the servitors is like, um, they do physical damage rather than energy. But it's melee only, and oh dear. Ow. This is why it's bad. That one hit just took away half the health of my melee guy. <laughs> oh dear. Um, that was, however, the only action they had left. So, this is why I kind of want to give them priority targeting on the servitors. The servitors are flesh, flesh bags. They are meat shields. Let's start using them as such. So, if we move him forward, no longer got the uh, tech priest as an inviting target. Let's move this one forward as well. Okay, so they can't do anything, but they are in a different position. And I will move foot forward. By the way, activation of weapons and things do not actually cause... Um, do not consume movement in any way, shape or form. So I can move to here, attack, and then move onwards to the limit of my movement range. And the game is perfectly fine with that. I'm just moving here because I want to murder this uh, console. There we go. Minus two to Necron Awakening. That's knocked it back slightly. It's not going to affect the um, result at the end of this, I don't think. But at least it's going to make it so that um, the enemy doesn't awaken. Well, it's going to limit the um, effects in this fight, rather, a bit more. But I'm going to Machine Spirit into this guy as well, so. Here we go. Enjoy my little pew pew laser pistols. Unfortunately, we're out of cognition now because I used my last one to swing that axe. So, yeah, end the turn. There we go. Necron reanimation has come back up. But I've delayed it from getting to the next stage and getting more bonuses thrown against me. Oh, bugger. Oh, bugger. <laughs> Well, we got more stuff. Okay. Um, um, Canoptech scarabs have appeared, but more importantly, there was another warrior off to the side. Um, yeah, Terzim, what are those? Opportunity equals knowledge. Gather. Must obtain. Required. I, I grabbed some of those for you guys, like, a few chambers back, actually. Um, Resac. Uh, scarabs detected. Source data servicing. So, Resac is um, a tech priest whose signal we followed to arrive on this planet, by the by. I think, I get the feeling that uh, by skipping the um, tutorial, I skipped a bunch of story, so I'm backfilling a little bit here. Um, Rishak came here um, to found this place, explored it a bit, and is um, as far as we know, dead zone at this point. Or one with the machine god, or something like that. Um, but um, we have found data logs from him, which uh, is all encrypted. So we've got um, basically a recording, uh, a whole load of files and stuff from him. So yes, um, scams detected, and that has unlocked some information. Ready to no life form detected. Area safe. Continue forwards. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Reditus, verify your cogitators and tell me what surfaced from Major Rejax's cogitators. Rejax, scarabs of an unknown Xenos race. Biology, synthetic. Possible artificial intelligence. Once specimens gathered, AI theory equals false. Personal recording, weeks of study show there are many variants of scarab, each with their own roles within Xenos economy and architecture, able to build and deconstruct anything they encounter. They are able to repair other units within their species with lightning speed. Be warned, they are deadly in large swarms. Yeah, Vidax it says, It appears the machine spirit is with us. We've been able to access some more of Rishak's data than we thought was corrupt. But, uh, yes. Um, Tracius brings up the po a fair point here. It must be due to recording these Xenos forms that the machine spirit has blessed us with access to these cogitator records. It's unsure why he would lock this under a synthetic proximity encryption. That is a good point, actually. Why would he do that? Hmm. Probably because it's heretical knowledge or some such. Anyway, gather a point. 
Um, however, yes. As you can see, this one has opened, and there is an additional warrior on my left flank now. As well as there being two packs of scarabs appearing to the sides. I'm not in any kind of position to deal with that warrior, so I'm going to drop a... No, not there. Let's drop him here. Drop a servitor. Just where these guys can't shoot him, really. But, but where he'll get spotted easily by that guy. So I'm basically throwing him in as a decoy. Oh, this is going to get nasty. Oh, and he moves first as well. I'm glad I deployed that servitor. It might save my tech priest from getting shot in the face. Okay, what can I do? That guy's got three. I don't have any kind of um, cognition reserve. Because I don't, I don't really have good ways to get it either. But I do have all of my support troops on the field now. So that's good, at least. Um, something I can do... Three. One to two. You, then you, then you. I'm going to delay my melee guy to the end. Because I think I can get a push in on him. Uh, yep, he's going for that guy. Four damage, not quite dead. One cognition. And the scarabs are on the move. Oh, yeah. The scarabs are going to be such a pain, especially since they repair Necron units too. Um, what I want to do is get that guy down as fast as possible. What I really want is that. Well, not really. I'm not, I'm not using it that much, but um, if this was later on, I would be desperate to capture that three point um, reserve. As it is now, though. One, two, one. Um, the thing is, this particular blast pistol, by hitting something with it, I do reveal its stats as if I scanned it with a servo skull. So that's one of the advantages of this really cheap basic pistol. It does a whole bunch of different things. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to plink that scarab swarm. They should have like four hit points, I think. Oh, yep, they did have four. Now they've got two. <laughs> yeah, so and since it's a swarm type, it's lost two of its members too. And then I'm going to hit this Necron here. Another two damage. It's not quite down, but that can't be helped. I'm going to back up slightly. And I'm going to scout. Not, not scout. I'm going to scan... I don't really have many other choices, really, because I'm going to scan this cognition source here to get some absorbed and brought back to me. Because there's, I'm not getting much by way of usable information. And I'm Mechanicus. We thrive on information. Like, there's some more information. Apparently that, that really hurts. Who knew? <laughs> That Necron Warrior goes next. I'm not quite far enough ahead with this Servitor. I'll move the Servitor over to... I'm actually going to need help with this guy. Pretty sure. So, let's move... this Servitor up over here. So, that, that guy there. Uh, bop. Actually, that was a mistake, because we've just lost one of the Servitors, and we've got four enemies over here. That's kind of bad. I could just murder this guy. Let's wait on this one. I'm not enjoying how how long it's taking me to work through this. Jeez. Um, I'll wait on you as well. Melee guy. We have cognition. We can push forward now. And I will do so into raw melee range. Actually, let, let, let's let's do that. Let's do this. Let's get closer. We'll fire the pistol at him to take him out. Because if you're actually in melee range, you can't actually, you know, do stuff. Um, I can move. 
since he's down, he can't do a area control. However, if my guy gets hit once more, he is going to die. Well, if he gets critical hit once more, rather. So, move next to him, get cognition back, use it to swing a power axe in his face. And that one is now out of the fight. But my tech boy is in very serious trouble. I'll save the skull. This guy is ready. He's going to move forward. Sadly, I can't quite get him f past this scab to get at that warrior. But I can move him into the way so that he's going to absorb the next hits. And he's also going to whack this scab storm as well. That was a bit of a lag there. But, um... That said, it only seemed to do one damage, because only one scarab disappeared. But that said, this my tech piece over here can't deal with this by himself. Might have to pull him back, actually, and try to d focus on these guys. Just hope, no, just hope no more enemies turn up, honestly. <laughs> that would be so bad. Right. Okay. That's something that could be done. Um, that scout can't actually get at my guys, and there's no damage to that. That depends if they can heal themselves, really. That Necron Warrior is going to attack and do something nasty. Uh, these two servitors are ready to go. This one is going to attack that guy, I'm 90% sure. So, I'm thinking that, um... Since I want to get Jeremiah into position against that Necron Warrior... But I, I don't want an attack of opportunity from the Scarab. That means I want to wait a few moments more. And see what, ha what else happens. Like, that guy is getting killed pretty quickly. Yeah, those scouts are just wandering off because they don't know what's going on. Oh, they can go back to those and repair themselves? I was not aware of that. This is such a big disadvantage for fighting in two places, jeez. Um, I'm going to delay this turn. Yep, he's shooting at the um, meat shield. You are ready to go screaming in. Oh, you're just out of range. Sucks. Okay, you're going to go over there then. Just to eat one more shot. That is your purpose in life now. This guy is almost dead. Can't move. Can wallop these guys. Ah, that did the trick. They're dead. Then you're going to advance one. And stop. You are next. You are going to advance forward and whack this guy. So, you remember how I mentioned that you can't use ranged weapons in melee? And how there is an, a skill which allows you to avoid attacks of opportunity? The way it works is, if you have a melee attack and your opponent moves out of a tile that you are in melee contact with, you get a free attack against them. It can only happen once per turn, but... That, they, these guys only have ranged weapons, so they have to back off to use their ranged gun in combat. And as soon as they tr try to back up, this servitor is going to punch them in the face. Admit it's a very weak punch, but is still doing something. And ooh, actually, machine spirit plus three damage. If you can keep your servitors alive, they actually seem to do a lot. <laughs> the more you know. Okay, let's see. Um, if I move to there, I can attack the scarab swarm. Um, the machine spirit of my power axe is ready, which reduces enemy armor, which is good because this guy actually has some armor. I'm thinking Machine Spirit Pistol into this Scarab group. Oh, that did a lot to them, actually. Then advance. And Power Axe this Necron Skeleton in the face. Which will also remove his resistance to energy attacks. 
There we go. And as soon as this guy backs off, both of my guys should get an attack of opportunity, if I am understanding this correctly. So, he'll get hit twice with physical damage as soon as he tries to back away to um, be able to use his gun again. Um... Going to gather a point because sure, and that just leaves me with my last cog boy, which is this one. Can't fire past the, my colleagues because they're too close. So all that's left is moving into a fire support position to start engaging this guy, and I don't have to move far to do that. And we also can see the stats as well. See if he's got anything. That He's resistant to. Oh, jeez. Two points of energy resistance. That is awful. Not to one damage. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. That guy is Im almost immune to my ranged attacks at the moment. So I'm actually going to move this cold boy this way. There we go. That is really bad. <laughs> okay, so you are still doing pretty well. Let's um, whack you again while I've got you here. Hello, bonk. But that also means that my power axe is already back up again, so next turn it has a machine spirit attack. Which is good because um, then I can use points to rush over here and d start we wrecking the other one. Oh, yep, tried to back off, gets punched for four damage. Oh! <laughs> Walked into the other one as well. Oh dear. What are you going to do? Uh, shoot it. That's okay, I can take that. I will mention, though, that um, you do. You do get penalised a bit if you um, bring back your troops injured. So there is that. Um, you're next. You've got you've got four points. You're going to die. Told you. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, let's move around so that you will get attacked hard if, as soon as you try to disengage. Good to know that opportunity attacks use machine spirit if it's ready as well. So that's that. You are okay. I think I'm gonna wait on you, actually. Actually no, there's no there's little points. Um Apart from making sure that the um scarabs don't munch on my tech priest. That, yeah, that, that's the only thing this guy's going to be able to do for me now. Making sure these scabs don't munch on my tech priest. So, so as such, I'll reposition him onto this side here. And then execute this guy. Admittedly, I lost a, co a cognition point, but hey. Details. Details. Also, I'd like to point out, by the way, I've been in this battle for like half an hour. <laughs> um, yeah. Talking about it. Slows me down so much. That's also the harder difficulty, so I'm actually treating these guys with respect. Oh, look, he's down. Actually, that, that gives me an opportunity, a window right there. Because if, if your objective is to destroy the enemy, merely, well, quote-unquote merely, merely taking them all into the disabled is enough. So if I push the attack and manage to take this guy out, which I think I can, I've got enough firepower. Yes, I have. One more hit will do it. Then everything will be disabled and that will count as a victory for me. Yep. Um, it also collects all cognition points left on the map on the uh, for that turn. Uh, when you finish a fight. And then it brings you back out to the deployment. So that's another reason why it's bad to have cognition points floating around out here usually. Okay. 
circumstance evaluation confirmed disappointing. Necrons employ teleportation technology to achieve post destruction discorporation. Interrogative Where do the remains go? Fascination intensifies. You see, this is why I tried to scan that one earlier. Ugh. Upon destruction, the Necron Constructs vanish, leaving no samples to be collected. So, take pit grabs of the damage from the Necron weapons. At least, this information may be of use. Thoroughly search the chamber for any components that might have been missed by the teleportation effect. Unlikely. Or just move on, hoping the next combat will yield useful samples. That was the only combat in this deployment, so that one's actually a bad one for us now. Because there's no benefit to just hurrying off. So, either archive or analyze. Um, I think archive. Let's, let's try and analyze. Let's see if they left any shiny bits behind. You never know. Maybe I'll find a Necron's finger or something. I doubt it, though. Ooh. <laughs> the cohort is slowed down. Yep, so enemy awakening increased slightly. At this point, that doesn't matter. It didn't tick over to the next point. Um... However, they got some samples of uncertain technology. It's called a scanner. Which is useful, by the way. Um, it's um, an additional way to get um, cognition points from something within ra within its range. You can use it every three turns to extract one cognition point directly from a target. So it's another way to help gather cognition. Useful, but not to me right now. And I know I've overrun slightly with this part as well. Anyway, mission complete. The cohort returns from the tomb, frustrated by the lack of physical samples of Necron constructs. However, the data they have gathered on the phasing out of Necron remains is illuminating in itself. Yes, they disappear like um, mechanical skeleton ghosts. Yes. <laughs> Val valuable data present, greater than past. Total totality of human knowledge increased. Mission conclusion, positive. Yeah. yeah, the big big boss is not too happy with it though. Can I say I support your conclusion? Beneficial conclusion, itemization follows. Necron discorporation witnessed. Enemy constructs destroyed greater than zero. Okay, <laughs> that's the conclusion for positive. Um, Necron combat performance evaluated. Chances of functioning Necron available for dissection increased. Yeah, yeah. Um, however, forcedness, my emotional cause are returning sensations of frustration and resentment, and I choose to acknowledge them. The lives of my tech priests are not there to be risked for the fulfillment of your desires, tech acquisitor. They are there to be risked for the inquisition of knowledge slash learning slash sacred knowledge. Your understanding equals approvable. So yeah, um, the tech wizard acknowledges the dis disappointment in the boss's response to this. But hey, details. <coughs> right. Okay, so that was our first mission. It's actually taken me two parts to do that. Which is really slow. It's like, when I go into narrative mode, it's... I go way slower. Because I'm talking as, as we go. But yeah, there we go. Yeah, minus 60... Minus 60, because they're both at half health. Um, I got some resources for the amount of um, enemies taken out. There we go. Yeah, it's good. I was only at level 3 on that. So, 3% total neck one awakening. Minus 120 blackstone, because of the condition my guys came back in. That wipes out all of that. And some of the Blackstone reward as well. Though I am a couple of hundred ahead. And I've got extra toys. So, yeah. I think um, overall, this mirrors the mission results as, as a whole. Um, disappointment slash resentment. But overall, positive. Of course, the services, three of them made it back. One of them is dead, but hey, who cares about them? They're just pieces of meat walking around. <laughs> but yeah, close. And we also got a new canticle, which is... Canticle Craft. The next physical attacks will deal plus three physical damage. Complete one mission without using a canticle. One out of one. So, the fact I didn't use a canticle there, which I could have done actually to negate 60 blackstone cost. It's given me a new canticle. I think that one has three levels, if I recall correctly. Let's have a quick look-see. 
Canicles, Canicles. Uh, graph level one, level two, level three. Yes, complete three missions without using a canticle. Will give me the level three version, which is um, the next physical attack will do plus nine damage. I've got to look at more seriously into using those canticles, jeez. But then again, those rewards are useful. Anyway, um, Infestus Mechadendrite, which gives um, single target melee attack, deals one physical damage, and knocks the target back by one tile as well. An aggressively wield Mechadendrite, which will lash out and search for any target that doesn't log as an ally in its uh, local cogitator. Modifications to the Infestus were required to compensate for Necron flayed ones as their human flesh covered shells interfere with target locking. Interesting. And um, of course we also got the scanner and we also got um, an Omnispex which is um, target has a 50% chance to miss you with its attacks for one round. So yeah that can be used to make me a bit more survivable at the very least. But hey, that is that, and we are, of course, over the half-hour mark. So, I'm going to call it there. This has been uh, I Am Mark Three. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying this little trip into the 40k universe in um, Total War... Total War... Total War Warhammer... Blah, 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 things. In Warhammer 40,000 Mechanicus. There we go. So, yeah. And thank you very much for watching. If you um, feel free to like, favorite, share, subscribe, thumbs up, all those good little things that help out the channel. Comment. I forgot to mention, forgot to mention comments. Yeah, thingies. Um, the down like. The down like? Jeez. The dislike button is down there as well if you uh, decide you don't like this one. Though, as I keep saying, I don't like that button that much because it lacks context. All it says is someone didn't like your stuff. So I really don't appreciate those but uh, hey it's there if you choose to use it so yeah thanks for watching and i'll catch you all some other time see you all later